administering a chest x-ray, AP, and lateral views. A PA, or posterior to anterior chest x-ray, is performed at 72 inches away from the upright chest bucky. You can either place the cassette into the bucky horizontally or vertically. In other words, you can place it either landscape oriented or portrait oriented. However, as a rule, you might choose one versus the other for consistency. But keep in mind, there are individuals whose chests are wide, so a landscape-oriented cassette might be necessary. Once again, your tube should be at 72 inches away from the upright bucky, provided that you have centered the table to your bucky already. You want to stand the patient up, shoulders rolled forward, and the center of the beam running through their spine. Horizontally, you'll want to center your light at the lowest portion of the scapulas. Now, this graphic on your right-hand side shows uh, where your centering line is. You may not be able to visualize the scapulas on this individual. You can see kind of the, the medial side of the scapula here, but this illustrates perfectly where your center line wants to be. And feel free to palpate the patient uh, have them move their shoulder blades backwards so you might be able to feel those blades and center accordingly. You want to make sure that your patient is standing with feet shoulder width apart and that they aren't leaning to a specific side. Your collimator light and the top of your cassette line, as you can see in this picture, should rise to the level where the trapezoid muscle connects to the neck. Now, keep in mind, your cassette your light and your uh, x-ray tube should all be lined up together so that everything is in place. All you have to do is move the patient in and position to them. Once you're done, then you're ready to shoot your x-ray. So all this has been done pre uh, uh, prior to this point. That being said, you've got a collimator light that lines the top of the cassette here, but the patient should come right in here where the trapezoid meets the neck this is an illustration off to the right-hand side, this little figurine uh, right where the neck is. That shoulder comes in and hits that line. It's also called a collar line where the collar comes down, drops on the neck. That's where you want to center the top of your collimator light. You'll get good x-rays uh, if you're consistent with this. But uh, remember, heavy, heavier persons, this is very difficult because they've got a lot more meat on top of their shoulders and the light will look significantly lower but you'll have to get used to that and train yourself to know exactly where that trapezoid is. So the, uh, remember the top, of the, the top of the collimator light ends where the lower collar line is. So to administer the exam from a technical standpoint, make sure that the upright bucky setting is activated on your generator. Set your baseline technique. In this case, it'll be 12 mass at 92 kV. Remember, this is not a guarantee, but it is a baseline technique for a patient standing up against a bucky 72 inches away with a grid. So uh, next, you'll depress the prep button on the generator before you ask them to hold their breath, not after. Depress the button wait for the indicator light, hold your finger down, and then ask the patient to take in a deep breath, hold their breath, and once the patient complies, depress the x-ray exposure button, shoot your x-ray, and then after the x-ray is done, don't forget to tell them to breathe again. Here's what a normal AP chest should look like. Upon a quick review, you should be able to see all four corners of the lungs. Let me outline it for you. The two apices at the top of each lung field. You should also see, uh, be able to see the costophrenic angles in the lower portions of the image. Now, these are the four, benchmark, uh, four benchmarks to evaluate full lung inclusion. Also, the heart should be situated just to the right of the spine. You can see my cursor. Most of it is here on this side, and you can see a, a small portion uh, the ventricle uh, on that side as well. Chest x-rays are displayed as if the patient is facing us in anatomical position. So the right lung is on the left, on, uh, on your left, and uh, the left lung is on your right. The heart, as you know, it's situated on the left-hand side, so you can see it leaning to the right. 
and the uh, aorta is also just above the heart. Here you can see it overlapping the spine, but it is above the heart, slightly to the right-hand side, your right-hand side. So you can orient yourself to your image by using these uh, markers uh, to look at each and every film. Only in very rare circumstance, there is a condition, it's called situs inversus, and that is where the heart is situated on the opposite side. In fact, all the anatomy is kind of flipped uh, backward. It's a very, very unusual condition, but you kind of need to know that it, it does exist. The heart is roughly halfway down in the image and it's overlapping the span, spine the, uh, and part of the lung field. The pulmonary artery extends above the heart from there. Your clavicles should come together nicely in the middle. You see those? It's moving relatively horizontally and inferiorly toward the middle. Notice that the image on the left uh, is burned out. Let's bring these up for you. Now, in many cases, we've had some issues where uh, uh, basic operators will send in chest x-rays and they may not fully understand why the image is burned out. And this will help you to kind of clearly get an understanding of what needs to be visualized before you send that image out to your doctor. The vascularities that you see here, see those little uh, stems that are uh, poking through, little bronchioles and bronchi. Um, we can bring up an arrow for those right there. You can see those pretty clearly, but in the uh, image on the left-hand side, everything seems to be burned out. It's just a black field. And trust you me, this can be very easy for, for uh, beginners to come in and not understand why a doctor can't read the film because clearly you can see the lungs, but it's not the overall lungs you're looking for. You want to see the ribs and the vascularities. Um, here on the left-hand side, the vascularities are blackened. The heart shadow is distorted. Uh, it, uh, the heart appears more rounded. It's impossible to read a chest x-ray that doesn't include those, those vascularities and bronchies that I discussed with you. Consequently, the chest needs to be penetrated adequately, adequately so you can see the spine in the center. And the under-penetrated film on the right-hand side, that limits the physician's ability to, to determine fluid levels you know, uh, or the heart size. You've got possible fluid that can be around the heart and other issues. So you've got to be, uh, be able to see a well-balanced uh, image where you can see part of the spine, you can make out all portions of the lungs, uh, and you can see the lung field, the tissue itself, as you, uh, the striations uh, and the surfaces here. So uh, compare these images, the, the contrast and the density, and understand that this in the center is an optimized image. There are a couple of other things you do need to know when you're evaluating your images. There are conditions or incidences where uh, surgeries may have taken place and it makes it uh, difficult to determine if you have the entire lung field on your x-ray. A pleural effusion or excess fluid that builds ar uh, around the lung, it, it, it collects on the lower part of the lung, it can create an area that appears whited out. In your image on the left-hand side here, you can see that one lung looks uh, significantly higher than the other. But in, uh, in fact, it's simply for the fact that there is a, a full lung here, but it's covered in fluid. So you may think that you got all of this lung in the field when indeed the lung comes way down here and you may actually have cut it off. So be mindful uh, of the patient's history if you see something to this degree. So I'm going to mark this to see, uh, first of all, you want to make sure you, write, uh, you mark your images right to left. And then also the image on the right-hand side, that um, is a situation where the patient had a lobectomy. And when they have one of their um, lobes removed from their lungs, one of their five lobes removed from their lungs, then it can also create the, um, the situation where the, lung, the lungs are actually higher than they should be. So um, that being said, there are circumstances where you have to be paying attention to make sure that you get your angles uh, all on the image. Okay, so for the left lateral exam, your tube should be, again, be 72 inches away from the bucky. Have the patient stand with their left side against the upright bucky. 
with both feet shoulder width apart. Their hands ideally should be holding a stabilization bar and uh, you should, uh, if this is not possible, you should have them have their hands placed on their head with their elbows out in front of them. Make sure that their shoulder line or their scapula lines are completely perpendicular to the bucky. And you can see <clears throat> uh, in this individual's uh, circumstance that there are red crosshairs that indicate where your, the center of your x-ray beam is. Your vertical beam should be centered right across what I refer to as the tickle line. I understand this is not an official um, uh, anatomical uh, r referendum, but to make it easy, you know, it, I may tell you where a lateral line uh, on a side of a patient would be, a, a coronal view, but to make it easy, if I asked you to uh, reach up and tickle someone with their arms above their head, you would know exactly where to put your finger. And ironically, the tickle line is exactly where you want to center the patient. So if you are poking them in the side for a chest x-ray and they jump, chances are you're uh, centered on the correct line. <laughs> so it, it is indeed the most sensitive area on the rib cage. And of course, the horizontal line should be at the level of a man's nipple line or at the lower end of the scapula if you're going to palpate for the woman's level there. So again, your base uh, for another technique here, your baseline technique is 35 mass at 95 kvp. Now let's evaluate the lateral chest x-rays. Your lateral film is always viewed as if you are looking at the patient from their left hand side. This is a good chest x-ray, although the subject is slightly rotated. You can tell this from the ribs that are extending uh, behind the spine. If there's too much of a gap, much more than what you see here, you'll need to do the x-ray again. Uh, an ideal lateral chest uh, x-ray completely eliminates any ribs from behind the back. So you can see them on the sides of the lungs, but you shouldn't on the back side. Additionally, you can see the lower costophrenic angles, as we saw in the AP, and the heart shadow and thoracic spine seen in profile. Now, in an overpenetrated lateral image, as visualized on the left, notice how the vascularities are burned out again on this image. The heart shadow is obscured, and you can barely make out the thoracic spine. So remember that the lateral chest x-rays are always done on the left hand side facing the imaging plate. That means from the tube side, the patient is uh, facing to your right hand side. Their left side is always against the upright bucky. This is so that the heart shadow is not magnified. And the physician often looks for a condition called cardiomegaly, which is an enlarged heart. A chest x-ray done with the patient's right side against the bucky can make the heart appear enlarged. And you certainly don't want to uh, in, in, uh, create a false positive or uh, a false negative on this. An underpenetrated film can be seen on the right. Although you can see some vascularities, a large portion of the lungs are lost. At times, it can be challenging to see all the lobes of the lungs on patients, and the primary concern on the lateral x-rays is the heart shadow, the aorta, and visualizing the costophrenic angles.